So before last night, there was a lot of advisory from the government. The Lagos State government was emphatic about do not cross the 12 um, a.m. deadline given to you as all churches should close before the 12 uh, a.m. Uh, deadline that we usually do cross over. And churches advise that people, you know, don't stay, services should not exceed um, 11 p.m. Some seem to have complied. Uh, we'll be having a special package on that subsequently um, on Plus TV Africa. But there was some compliance uh, by churches. Uh, but how did we manage with a crossover service that didn't have that symbolic 12 midnight. To talk about this is Pastor Shokwe Ilori, the Revival Assembly Church Lekki. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you again for having me. Pastor, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> okay. How was it for you, um, crossover in a pandemic? Well, um... First of all, we're, we're grateful to be alive. That's the very important thing. And we thank God that um, in spite of how devastating this has been all over the world, um, it has not affected Nigeria as adversely as it has other parts of the world. For this, we are grateful. And the fact that we are able to um, even have um, the opportunity to gather, to come together to say thank you to God for bringing us into a new year is, is enough uh, reason to be, to be grateful. So... What do I see about us doing this in this pandemic? I, I have this uh, attitude of gratitude. I'm just grateful that we are able to even have a new year, that we're able to even cross into a new year. Not saying that the people who have, um, we've lost along the way, we, we, we are sad about that, but nonetheless, we are grateful. So that's what I have to say about we're We're grateful that we are able to cross into a new year. All right, let's talk about some of the issues before um, the, the, I mean, before today. Uh, did your church, in the first instance, comply with the uh, safety uh, directive from the government when it comes to uh, the time you, you can conduct your crossover service? Yeah, well, um, we, yes, we, we complied because, you know, while the lockdown lasted, a lot of churches now went um, online. We, like... If before this pandemic, I'm sure probably I would be in your studio now instead of having this conversation on Zoom. So we began to um, explore the other avenues that have been ever, have made available for us, like by going online, uh, having Zoom meetings. A lot of churches had their programs on Facebook, some had on YouTube, some had on um, some TV stations where they had channels. So um, it's, it's, it really didn't affect much. The only thing is that we shifted the venue from the physical church to the online church, which I think makes it even more expansive because people can join us from all over the world. So we had an advantage um, in this crossover because we had more participation across the nations of the earth. I mean, joining us to crossover in Nigeria because we, we were online. A lot of churches were online. The churches that had physical services had their services from um, like 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. or 9 p.m. to 11 my own church, our, our church, Revival Assembly, we had our crossover or our um, New Year's Eve service, is what we called it. We had it from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. And then we, we ended that service, and the um, crossover service was from 11.45 to 12.15, which was online. That was strictly online. Okay. Uh, so what, what, were there concerns from members about, you know, not being in the church for the first time for many in many years, not being able to be physically in the church to cross over to the new year? Well, yes, there were a lot of people didn't like it. They didn't like, I can't um, pretend that, uh, <laughs> you know, we're very, very traditional people. We like the things that we like. We know we like doing things the way we like doing things. But I must let you understand that God is not like that. God is not religious. He might want you to do this in a particular way now, and then he will change his methods next year or change it the, the day after tomorrow or tomorrow. So we are the ones who become religious. We, the people who follow God, are the ones who are, who are stoic, we are static, but God is dynamic. So although the people didn't like it, you know, it's, we find ourselves in a situation where we just follow after God. If he says that this is the way, you know, it's going to go this year, 
uh, we will do it that way. Just glad to be alive and being able to even uh, have fellowship to, to, to worship God. So I believe that um, the people might not have liked it, but we, we made do with it. We were okay with it. And I believe that it's a new normal that we're, go we're going to have to get used to, that the church is going to have to physically move beyond the, the walls of the location of the church onto the online me medium, which is a, a vaster way to reach people across the world. So I believe that uh, although the people might not have really liked it, but all of us eventually we are, we are getting to the point where we understand it and we are going along with it. Oh, gratitude is one thing you, you mentioned earlier that um, you're, you're grateful yeah. for the fact that you were able yeah. to come in. But aside from being grateful that we're seeing 2021, what other forms of gratitude did your members express to you in spite of the pandemic that they were grateful for um, in the year 2020? Well, the year 2020... In, well, regardless that we had a, a pandemic, a lot of people still had a lot of visitation. They had testimonies. Uh, 2020 was a challenging year, but do you know that some people got new jobs? People got new jobs. People got promoted. Some people finished building their houses. Some people bought uh, property, you know, you know. So although the year was um, not a very, um, not a very uh, friendly year, it did not stop people from getting blessed. It shows that um, God has a way of, even in adversity, selecting his people and showing them kindness. So that is, that's what we call the mercy of God. The Bible says that it is because of his mercies that we are not consumed, because they are new every morning. So his faithfulness does not stop. Even though there was a pandemic, you know, people were, uh, the economy nearly shut down. Uh, there probably is a recession that we're in. But God, you know, in his infinite mercy, kept us in a situation where some people got blessed, some people got married, some people got pregnant, some people delivered babies. So there was testimonies across board. So for as many people that went through challenging times, some people lost their jobs, some people lost their businesses, some people lost family members, but other people also, you know, gained in different areas. Indeed. So for as many people as lost, a lot of people also gained. Even the people that lost things are still you know, grateful because in spite of their losses, they still believe that God has been good to them because he still satisfies them with the gift of life and the, the, the ability to carry on in spite of the losses that they suffered. So, you know, that is the way that we see that. Though 2020 was challenging, we still have a lot to be grateful for. And the fact that we know, we, you know, the coronavirus took us by surprise in 2020. But in 2021, we already know there is a pandemic. So when we're entering 2021, we're entering, entering with an understanding that there's a pan pan pandemic. So 2021 has a virus. We know about it. We know how to, to deal with it. We, we lay it before God, and we are entering at an advantage. So this year is going to be better than last year. All right. the, the, the Christian community, uh, there was uh, some controversy over the, um, I mean, the restrictions um, imposed as a result of COVID-19. Um, what is your assessment of the response of the leadership of Christendom in Nigeria to government's outlined, you know, safety measures as regards controlling the spread of COVID-19? What is my assessment could you say that again? My assessment of, Your assessment uh, of, of the, the leadership, the Christian leadership in Nigeria, how they have reacted to the numerous directives from the federal government and the NCDC um, to protect and stop this, uh, protect Nigerians and stop the spread of COVID-19. I believe that in a larger um, sense, if we look at it um, holistically as per where the church leadership um, the way we responded, I believe that more than any other body or organization in Nigeria today, we have been the most compliant. You know, we, 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 the church is not supposed to be lawless. We are supposed to obey the government. That is part of scripture. So um, in, obeying God, in obeying God, we have to obey the authorities that God has put in place. So I believe that a lot of churches although they might not have really understood or liked, because we believe that um, we're, we're above the pandemic being able to restrict us or infect us and things like that. But I believe that a lot of church leadership still went ahead and complied with the government's uh, directives. 
So I, I, I don't think you will find any church that had crossover night and except maybe um, they stayed in their church until the next morning. Nobody would flout the curfew. We, the body of Christ, the true body of Christ, does not disobey government directive. We don't. We the, the Bible you. says that we obey those who are in authority because they are doing or carrying out the directive or the instructions of God. Any government that is in authority, it is God that allowed them to be there. So we, as, as, as children of God, have to obey the constituted authority. And that's what we did. A lot of people uh, across uh, the, the church, Christendom, that's what we did. We just All basically right. obeyed God. We went blind. All right, before I let you go, what's your New Year message to everyone watching? Well, my New Year message is that um, this year is going to be better than last year because already we know what this year has. You know, last year, COVID-19 took us by surprise. You know, we, we did not know that uh, there was a pandemic that, was, uh, that had taken over the world and was doing what it's doing. But already we know um, about COVID-19. So we, there's nothing to surprise us. So the, 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 my message for 2021 is that we already understand and we know what this year has in store. So the best thing for us to do is get close to God. When we get close to God, if we are with God, God will be with us. And in us being with God and God being with us, then we can overcome anything that is ahead of us. So this year is going to be a very, very easy year. It's going to be a simple year because we already know what is coming. Because we already know who we have and who is on our side. And if we submit ourselves to God, then we are going to win all the way. Every month, every month, every quarter, we will rise above every challenge. Praying and Christians will be. say... Amen to that one. <laughs> Thank you very much Amen. for joining us, uh, Pastor, and uh, sharing your thoughts on this matter. All right. Have a happy new year and blessed day. I wish you the same. All right. Um, that's it for the crossover conversation. We looked at it. It, it, it. I mean, a lot of persons didn't find it easy to, you know, like the pastor said, uh, with the decision of the government to restrict the crossover service. But like good Nigerians that most Christians are, they complied with the directive. For those that went to church, they stayed there until 4 a.m. when the curfew, at least uh, around here in Lagos. We'll go on a short break, and when we come back, we're still talking New Year. New Year resolutions is up next. Stay with us. <laughs> 